everyone welcome to heart of avocado my name is tapasya and in today's video we're going to be taking a look inside my mini bullet journal and i'm also going to be showing you how to make a pen loop for any journal you might have using just washi tape so if that sounds like something you're interested in stick around and we'll get right to it Like many people in the planning community, I was inspired to start this mini bullet journal several years ago by the channel Lindsay Scribbles. Um, her videos are just so aesthetic and her setups and layouts are so beautiful that it really made me want to get a mini bullet journal for myself. So the way I use this is as a supplement to my primary planner. So I have my main planner and that's where I do all my daily, weekly, and monthly planning. And then this mini bullet journal is a little add-on. Whenever I need something extra and I feel like that planner is not cutting it for me in a certain week, that's when this planner kind of comes in and fills that gap. So to give you a better idea of that, I started this bullet journal in 2022 and it is now 2024. So I've been working on this journal for over two years now. So there's no pressure to finish this within a year or anything like that. Whenever I need it, I use it, and other times I just rely on my main planner. Another area that this comes handy in is for short trips so if i'm ever taking a short trip somewhere for just a couple of days and i don't feel the need to bring my main planner then i always bring this along so now let's talk about the decoration so on the top here i have the springtime sunshine sticker from my shop which has all these mini holographic details and then on the back i have this ghost boba sticker by tk creates on the side I have this pen loop I made using washi tape and the pen I keep in it is just a black gel pen by Muji and this is in 0.5 millimeters. So let's dive inside this journal now. So starting off with the front page, um, this is where you can write down your personal information in case your notebook ever gets lost. So I just have my name, my phone number and my email here. The next page is blank, and then this is the index. Um, as you can see, it's not super filled out. So for me personally, I do like having an index and I like having it filled out, but it's kind of more important to me once the entire journal has been completed, because then if I ever need to reference a particular page, I can just pull it out, look in the index quickly and find the right page instead of having to flip through the entire notebook. But while I'm using it, the index is usually not too important to me. It's kind of more important for archiving purposes. Next up, it's blank. And then I have this cover page over here. It just says My Mini Bujo, and it has a bunch of stickers and washies, and it's honestly a little bit of a mess, but I think it looks pretty cute. On the next page, I think I tried to uh, make some sort of cover page for 2022, but I didn't like the way it turned out. So I decided to just cover it with washi tapes and a bunch of stickers. So that's what this is here. I put a lot of washi tape on the back, some sticker seals on top, and then just a bunch of stickers here to cover up whatever was behind it. On the next page here, I had a little future log for 2022, um, just some key dates I wanted to remember. It's not too filled out. I've usually found that future logs are not really my thing. I don't really keep up with them, so it's something I don't use anymore. But in 2022, I was still experimenting a little bit with the layout for this mini bullet journal, so I decided to put in a future log. I had some annual goals here, some empty pages, and then the next couple of pages are just calendar pages, but specifically for schoolwork. This is when I was finishing up my bachelor's degree and I was trying to be really organized with how many assignments I had and when they were due because I was traveling around a lot and yeah, traveling and going to college at the same time. 
are two things that don't really mix well together. So it took a lot of work to stay on top of it. So I made these mini calendars and I wrote down all my due dates and whenever I completed an assignment on time, I gave myself a little star. So that was April, this is May, June. Here I had some goals for April. And then I had this lovely little habit tracker I made, but I ended up not using it. But it's here and there's no month written on it, so I can always go back and reuse it if I ever need to. This was just a little schedule I made for the week for my spring quarter with all my classes and where they were located and the times. Next up is my Stardew Valley log. Stardew Valley is just this video game if you're not familiar with it. It's an RPG and it's probably my most favorite game of all time. Um, so this is just where I was keeping track of everything that was going on. The thing about a game like Stardew Valley is that there's just so much going on in the game that if you don't play for a couple of days, it can be hard to remember what you were working on. So I find it really helpful to just keep some sort of record of what I was working on. So whenever I start playing again, I can just reference that and know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I haven't been keeping up with writing what's going on in this mini bullet journal. So I've been using my notes app on my phone instead but this was one of the spreads and then it's also continued later on in this notebook so my best friend and i did several trips to canada last year and this was just his list of the things he wanted to do while we were in vancouver and on this next page i think this was right before i was um, about to leave for a trip so I just made a to-do list because when you're about to leave for a trip, there's just so many tasks you have to do. So I really find it helpful to always make a little to-do list for any trip that's coming up. And then um, this was for the next day, September 12th. This was the day we were leaving. So I made another list to keep track of all the things I wanted to do before we left and the things we wanted to do while we were on the way after leaving. This page here is just some goals, intentions, and tasks for October, just a little overview. And this is where I continued the Stardew Valley layout, but um, there's a bunch of space here, so I have to start keeping track of it in here. I honestly prefer keeping track in a journal to keeping track on my phone because I like having everything together and I can just kind of easily reference um, what was going on on what date far easier than having to like search through all my notes and compile all that information together. And I also use page threading so I can find all the previous pages that are attached to the topic really easily. So this was it for 2022. Next up we're delving into 2023 which was last year. So um, this page specifically I actually made this in 2023 but I was just looking for an empty page that I hadn't used up in my journal so I landed here but this page I made it in 2023. You'll be able to tell because my style of bullet journaling really changed in 2023. I would say prior to that things were very experimental. I wasn't really happy with how my layouts were turning out I did like these calendars but like pages like these I just wasn't very happy with them so in 2023 I decided to be far more intentional with how I use this notebook so I made this cover page I wrote down my words of the year and my three statements of who I wanted to be in 2023 Here's another habit tracker for February and something you'll notice on all my planners is that I am not very good about keeping up with habit trackers. I love making them, I like the idea of using them, but in practice I never end up keeping up with them. So that's definitely something that's a work in progress. Next I have this pre-travel checklist for a trip. Um, I had two trips, one was to the Bay Area, one was to Vancouver, so I had a pre-travel checklist for each one. 
And now we arrive to probably my most referenced page in this entire notebook. So I made this packing checklist for one of my trips and I have found this spread to be so helpful. Anytime I'm going on any road trip, I always pull this notebook out. The thing about this packing list is it's specifically for road trips where my cats are coming with me. So this really helps me stay organized and just make sure I'm not missing anything important. So I really reference this a lot and I love this page. This here was just a Canada bucket list of things I wanted to do. Same for the Bay Area. And you can kind of see how the way I planned in here really changed. I started incorporating more washi tape and just doing my titles a certain way. And then I kind of just started using this bullet journal more for lists. So anytime I needed to make any kind of list, a to-do list, a packing list, or a bucket list, this is kind of the notebook that I used in 2023. So these two pages were just um, daily spreads that I did about what I did on a specific day and then on another day I just wrote down how I was feeling. Another habit tracker. And then here I was just making a product list for my shop. So I have a bunch of these scattered all over my planners. Here I was just kind of brainstorming. I just had this idea for an RPG and I was just kind of writing it down. Something that I try to do a lot is that anytime I have any sort of idea, even if it's small, it's silly, or it's some sort of random invention, I try to just write it down. Whether it's on paper or in a notes app on my phone, I just always write down any idea that comes to my head. This was another to-do list for several different areas of my life. And then I started this life edit spread, but I really hated the way I decorated it. I just don't like this layout, so I ended up just not using it. So this was another product list. So I had this product list here but it was kind of unorganized so I decided to redo it and um, just create a little to-do list as well on the side. This one, P stands for photographed and then L stands for listed and then I would check things off as I got them done. Um, this is still incomplete. I have to add on a lot of other things but this is a reference page for me that I can look to if I ever need to. Another free travel checklist some chores I had to do. On these two pages, I just have video ideas for full videos and shorts, so I won't show that. So these two pages were just meant to be reference pages for my taxes, so I could make sure that everything was entered in correctly. This was just a brain dump for my shop for different tasks that I had to get done another life admin, and then we have another to-do list here for my shop. And then finally here I have another brainstorm for video ideas. I still have to put the title up here. And then on this side I was just thinking through some things, so I was writing down my thoughts. And that is pretty much it. So you can see I'm just on page 78 here. And this notebook has 187 pages. So the back page, I always just use this just to test out any pens. Um, it really helps because then you can tell exactly how each pen reacts on the specific paper you're using and how big it looks and it just helps you figure out which pen you want to use with which notebook. So I always make the last page on all my notebooks a pen test page. So you can see that more than half of this notebook is still blank. Um, so moving forward this year in 2024, I do plan on using this notebook primarily how I used it last year. So more of as a reference notebook where I write down more long-term things that I can reference and have handy whenever I need. 
and um, I do intend on doing another cover page like I did over here for 2023 and overall I would say that I do really like this notebook I find that it's especially useful for travel just because it's such a small portable size it's a really nice notebook to just throw in your bag and bring along with you and the fact that it kind of spans over several years is especially helpful because I have so much information in here that I can reference whenever I need to. Also in this back pocket here I have a bunch of stickers. Um, I have some star stickers, some mini heart stickers, and then just these miscellaneous stickers. Now let's talk about the pen loop and how to make it. All you need for the pen loop is just some washi tape. That's all you need. In addition to that, I'm also using this little washi tape cutter that's pretty neat. You just clip it on and you can easily cut your tape wherever you need. Um, I found this at a store called Umomo in Canada. If you're familiar with the store Daiso, um, Umomo is kind of like that. And they have a bunch of different Japanese goods and all sorts of cool things. This was something that I found at that store, a little washi tape cutter. And this thing is awesome. So I'm going to be using this, but you don't need anything like this. You could just tear the washi tape with your hands or you can also use a pair of scissors which I will also keep next to me just in case I need it. So I'm going to remove this pen loop so I can make a new one to show you guys. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take a piece of tape and we're going to create the loop portion. So to make the loop, we want to make sure the tape doesn't stick to the pen. So you're just going to pull up enough so that you can fold it on itself and create a loop. So I think this much should be enough. So I'm just going to cut it here. Then you just want to go ahead and fold this on itself. I'm going to try to line it up as best as you can. And you can kind of see it's not perfect, but this should do. So once you have this piece of washi tape, you want to go ahead and take your pen. And this is where the measuring part comes in. So you want to go ahead and fold it around itself. And I like to put the clip through. So I like to kind of just put the clip on and then do this portion just so that it's more secure. And I can tell that I'll need it to be this snug over here. So you kind of just want to mark it with your nail or something or just make a little fold there just so you know. So once you kind of know how big you need the loop to be, just slide out the pen, go ahead and put it to the side, and then we're going to need some more washi tape. I'm just going to go ahead and take probably about an inch and a half to two inches more of washi tape and then I'm going to go where I made that fold and I'm going to pinch the wash the little loop I made and I'm going to put this piece of washi tape perpendicular to it just so I can close off that loop and then you can just wrap the washi tape around like this so just so you can see, this is my loop, this is where I made the fold, and I kind of just put the new piece of washi tape a little bit beyond it. It really doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. So once you have that done, you essentially have a loop now. So once that's done, you just need a couple more pieces of washi tape. To secure it to the notebook, I like to use three to four pieces of washi. So I have one two and then I have a third one prepared so next you're just going to take your loop and I like to hold my pen next to the notebook so I know exactly where it's going to go and you can actually just slip your pen into the loop like this and then hold it exactly where you want it to be so I kind of want my pen to be right here it lines up perfectly with the notebook and then you're just going to take your first piece of washi tape and you're going to secure this in place. So the first piece goes over here 
And the second piece, I like to get really close to that edge, as close to that folded line you made as possible, just so that the pen is super snug inside that loop. And then finally, I like to take a third piece of washi tape and just secure the end. Then you want to press down really well just to make sure it won't come off. And then you can close your notebook and voila, you have a pen loop and it's super snug and it will get loose over time. And if it gets loose, you can always just take it off and then just readjust it and put new washi tape to secure it in place. But this is honestly pretty secure. I've had this old loop on here for several months now and it's been working out pretty well. And you can make this loop as loose or tight as you need it to be. And that's pretty much it. A simple and easy pen loop made out of washi tape. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, be sure to give it a thumbs down. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!